Welcome. Got a very sunny morning. The sun just broke over the clouds. We decided to come out here. Got my son out here with me. We're going to be discussing the thermodynamics of why we fire our clay bricks and what happens on a molecular level to make those bricks waterproof. Before we get into all that, if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to go jump into cooking some food right out of the greenhouse. Here. So as you can see, we've been firing some bricks and testing them out some success and some failures just recycling everything and we've got ourselves a nice feast here we've got some corn salad mache uh, some pak choy's tat soy's mustard tat soy some beet tops or swiss chard actually excuse me we've got a big old leaf of heading collard on the bottom a little bit of celery we've got a leek here we're gonna chop all this up mix it together Throw it together with some of our eggs and cook it right over the stove here. We've got ourselves some pine needle tea a brewing away. So we're gonna get all this going very quickly and then we're gonna go head outside and fire some bricks. Yeah, I can. Ooh. That looks perfect. That looks like some good food there. Got a hot cup of pine needle tea to keep us warm. And this is very high in vitamin C. Just all around good to have. Great to have pine trees around the property, create oxygen in the winter time. We're going to check out this kiln we built out of concrete and we're hoping that they last the duration of this firing cycle. We're going to fire up all these mud bricks we've got out here that have been drying. So we're gonna get right into this. This um, food is so good, and I got some pine tea. So coming up on all these bricks out here, they are pretty well dry. I don't know, we got about 20 of them or something. We've got our little spot here. You can hear a train coming way down there. So we've got this kiln we built. We're going to be able to put one brick in the front, bricks over the top. But before we get into actually firing these bricks, I'm going to stack them up and stuff, but I really want to talk about all of the processes. There's about six steps that it takes to get these bricks to be a fired brick. They will turn orange. They will be waterproof. So all of these bricks I've been showing, these are still green bricks and you're like, yeah, rust and those are brown. <laughs> Not technically green. Green in the sense that they are unfired. They still have LOIs or impurities in them. So I kind of showed throwing that together. I just basically encapsulated all of these bricks. I'm going to show the whole firing process. All of our bricks are straight up and down. So the air can move through, the heat can move through, and we're going to start firing it from the top also so it can burn back down. I have a brick that I will slide over the top so we can basically cap it and have a real kiln with a nice hot inside that is completely protected from outside temperatures or atmosphere. But before we start really ramping up the heat in there, we have a small fire going and it's warm and it's drawing it through all of those bricks. So they've been in there for maybe 10 minutes or so and this is really drying them out. So there's six distinguished steps that these bricks are going to travel through here in order to become a fully finished brick. First step is evaporation. Then we've got dehydration, which is occurring in this kiln also. Next is oxidation. Then we move on to vitrication and then we are flashing it and then we are finally just cooling it. And cooling is kind of a long step in a industrial setting. So we're not going to be able to hold four to five days like an industry would for firing real bricks. But we're not held to the standards of industry, so we're just doing this as best we can over the longest period. We started early in the morning here. We're going to carry this through the whole day. The whole process will be completed and we should have some finished bricks. So I wanna break these six steps down a little further. Step number 
one was evaporation. That sun is bright there. Man, it feels good on the face though. So evaporation is going to occur between 70, 60, 70 degrees up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can also perform the dehydration step by just simply setting your bricks around your fire and slowly drying them over a whole day or leaving them in a sunny location where the moisture is not going to rain down on them or soak into them. You want a drying box or something like that to do it organically without having a whole lot of electricity or energy put into this process. So the next step is dehydration that's going to run from about 300 degrees Fahrenheit up to about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So that is a really important process. You want to get all of the carbonaceous matter really cooking hot. You want to get all of the moisture cooked out. And that really prevents any cracking or misformation of your bricks during this whole process. So the third phase of this is oxidation and that is going to start occurring in the first evaporation phase as long as the moisture is moving properly at about 570 degrees. This is going to occur the oxidation of all the carbonaceous matter running up to about 16, 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when all of that is going to be fully oxidized. So the fourth step is vitrication, and that is going to occur at about 1200 degrees up to about 2300 degrees. So we're really going to have to crank this fire up. We're gonna to have to force some air in here to be able to achieve those temperatures. Now all carbonaceous matter is completely deleted from this brick at this point, and you're raising the brick up to the point of its highest temperature, and this is where we're going to move into the next step. So the next step, flashing, is going to start occurring at 2100 degrees to about 2300 degrees and that is going to give that brick its orange color or terracotta look and the strength was actually developed in the previous stage vitrication bringing it up to its highest temperature and holding that that is going to give your brick all the durability and strength of a real brick so the sixth phase of this is cooling and as i said cooling is really done over four to five days on an industrial level and slowly the temp is slowly brought down to provide the best conditions and prevent any loss of material we don't have anything invested in this so we're trying to do this the best we can to prevent any damage but if i break a brick i'm really not that concerned with it we've got plenty of them we've got a ton of green bricks still drying in the greenhouse we're going to continue this process till we have an entire kiln built someone suggested we build a pizza oven so so we can make enough of these we can probably do that another thing we're going to use all of these bricks for once they are fully finished and they look like a brick we're going to use them for some foundry so we're going to be using our own aluminum and a whole bunch of recycled aluminum so we'll be able to make our own tools and items and useful things from recycled metals and we'll be able to do that all with bricks we made ourselves so i really wanted to explain those six steps because i wanted to explain and have everybody understand what's actually happening as it moves through those temperatures why we're holding those temperatures and then why we're bringing it slowly back down so there won't be much talking throughout the rest of this i'm probably just going to show and put up words so let's get right into this Very important step on all of this is getting a good fire going up top. So we've had some decent coals. We've burnt this down several times. This is just cranking heat up. You can see fire burning through there. We've got some gaps here, but we're filling all the gaps with charcoal and ash. You can see the fire burning up top here. And that is what we need. I'm gonna take a step back. Having that fire up top is very important because we want to have those coals glowing red hot through the entire kiln. And this is a long process. It takes a lot of fuel. We've saved up a ton of wood just for this project here. So we continually keep feeding it small sticks on top as it's continually burning it down. So we've burnt that down several times and we're just letting this thing build temps.
so here we are finishing up this video at the end of the day here and we started this video at the beginning of the day my little guy's been out here with me all day he's climbing the compost pile so we finally finished up on these bricks here and we've got some nice solid bricks let me show everybody what we're working with here now you can see where we had a little burn spot from being pressed up or we had ash there but that I'm certain will not affect the bricks just pulled this front brick off to expose it. These ran like a three, four hour cool down cycle. So we just kept a hot fire for the last four hours or so, three and a half, four hours. And we have some finished bricks here. Very, very impressed with it. This one's about, I don't know, two and a half, three inches thick or so. Most of them were pretty thick. I like to get a good solid brick that we can stack up and make our own foundry with. Now we've basically created ourselves our own metamorphic rocks here. So this one's still kind of warm, but this is a metamorphic rock. This is created only by one of two things, high heat and intense heat or high and intense pressure. So we form these rocks with extreme heat with a simple a little 12 volt fan, a little 12 volt inline blower and a simple little charger here so this little solar panel and we were able to avoid using manual labor for hours and hours just continually blowing on this fire to create that updraft and allow the temperatures we needed once we got these glowing hot we held the temperature and then we slowly began the cool down if you look back we showed the beginning of the cool down when the top of these top bricks were cooling down and this one here was sitting right about here so half of those were starting to cool, but the bottom half was still glowing and then everything below it was still glowing. So that was the beginning of the cool down process, which took quite some time with just a regular fire and turning the blower off here. So we were able to create these bricks for absolutely free. We've got a nice solid terracotta looking orange brick. And these bricks are going to be water insoluble. I haven't tested it yet, but I did test the other bricks that we had fired before we did this because we wanted to get our hands dirty and get this process started, do this by ourselves, and then share it with you guys so I knew what I was doing and I didn't look like a fool trying to do this the first time. This was very, very interesting for me. Very cool to observe the entire process. All six steps taking place and forming right in front of my eyes and then We've got a nice brick that is like a third of the weight that it started at. We lost a ton of water mass and organic matter that was actually inside the brick still, even though it was all just like a clay brick. There's still a lot of carbonaceous matter inside these bricks, so that is why we fire them, get them up to the right temperature, and then just flash them. Hold that temperature and then slowly bring it down, and we've got a nice finished brick here and these are just going to dry right out here till tomorrow we'll bring them inside the greenhouse then we're going to begin some foundry so we'll be using our aluminum out here and melting that down so stay tuned for all of that and I appreciate everybody watching this video if you have any questions on the process of this I tried to show it all without making it too long and boring so thank you guys for being subscribed and checking this video out I will see you guys next time